हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब सो एच पी एल सी टेक्निक इज अ वेरी पॉपुलर एनालिटिकल टेक्निक फॉर एनालिसिस ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल्स केमिकल्स पेस्टिसाइड्स एक्सेट्रा एंड व्हेन इट कम्स टू एन एच पी एल सी द सी एटीन कॉलम इज वाइडली यूज देर आर मेनी मैन्युफैक्चरर्स ऑफ द सी एटीन कॉलम्स लाइक फेनोमेनिक्स वाई एम सी वाटर्स एक्सेट्रा or the same manufacturer may also have the same different kinds of c18 column now one can have a very simple question whether this all c18 column same or are they different and that is the point for discussion today we will try to understand first what is meant by c18 so c18 is a column which is a bonded column on to the silica surface and c18 stand for octa decil silane so this is the ligand which is bonded on to the silica surface and you can see into the diagram so there is a siloxane linkage which is represented here sio si and this c18 ligand is bonded on to the silica surface and that is called as the c18 column so according to the up usp the c18 stationary phase is classified as the l1 column packing and there is no further uh, distinguishing between uh, separation between the different uh, c18 stationary phases so the common differences uh, based on to the dimension is obvious like different uh, length diameter particle size will certainly have the different uh, uh, chromatographic impact but there are certain important factors which are also different from one column to another column like carbon load pore size and the surface area you can also think about the different type of silica the type a which is a traditional silica which is a little acidic silica and having a good amount of metal impurities which is not so preferred for basic compound as it can result into a tailing now the high pure silica which is type b silica which is also called as the uh, near to neutral silica is much preferred for analysis of the basic compound because it will not have the silanol effect as like in the type a silica so these are the common differences we are not going to talk about this common differences but we are going to talk about something else now as you can see in the diagram over here now there are two alkyl groups connected to this silica that is the r1 and r2 now if this r1 and r2 is equal to methyl then this is called as a dimethyl c18 now you must have not seen such a dimethyl c18 as a brand name or some somewhere on to the coa of the column but in case if this r1 and r2 is equal to methyl then you can call this as a dimethyl c18 now this kind of column is very good for hydrophobic interactions and hence they can use for analysis of hydrophobic compounds and these are the commercial examples like zorbax eclipse xdb c18 or zorbax eclipse plus c18 now this is the stationary phase used into these two columns and there could be some another examples of the dimethyl c18 column what is dibutyl in case if your r1 and r2 is now dibutyl as you can see in the picture over here then this is called as a dibutyl c18 column now is it same as like dimethyl no now because of this dibutyl which is a branched chain alkyl groups uh, the steric hindrance got increased which is not present into the dimethyl c18 column so it can have the different retention time and sometimes a different selectivity especially for positional isomers it also increase the uh, protection of our uh, bonded stationary phase at acidic ph the reach out will not be there and hence because of that our stationary phase gets protected because of this bulky dibutyl functional groups Zorbax SBC18 is the commercial example of this particular stationary phase. Now, in case if you want to analyze the highly polar compounds on reverse phase liquid chromatography, you must have identified an issue that it has a very poor retention time. 
so how one can retain this highly polar functional groups or compounds onto the reverse phase liquid chromatography by making our stationary phase little polar now how this stationary phase can be made polar it can be made polar by using the hydrophilic end capping functional groups like hydroxyl in this example so the hydroxyl group is a polar group and that makes our column or stationary phase polar now as the column becomes polar it can be used for analysis of the polar compounds but in addition to that this kind of stationary phase also comes with the increased weightability now you must have seen that the uh, mobile phases with the more proportionate of aqueous part always has a problem with the equilibration or variation in the retention time why because our natural or normal reverse phase liquid chromatography stationary phases are hydrophobic in the nature and if you use the more amount of aqueous proportion then probably it will take longer time for getting the stationary phase weight or for the equilibration now to avoid this issue you can incorporate this hydrophilic end capping functional groups and that will help in the weighting of the column quite earlier so this is the important advantage of hydrophilic end capping now though it can be called as a c18 column but is it similar a c18 column like methyl c18 or dibutyl c18 absolutely no so there is a difference between the c18 columns and these are the commercial examples of uh, this hydrophilic end capping now it's a very popular phenomenon nowadays used by many column manufacturers which is called as a polar group embedment onto the C18 chain. Now in a diagram you can see that a polar group is embedded inside the C18 chain. And what is the advantage of uh, this polar group? Now there are many advantages of the polar groups which is embedded into the C18 chain. The first is the stationary phase maintains a reverse phase character. Means though your column becomes a little polar, still you can utilize this stationary phase or column for the reverse phase analysis. The phases provide a different selectivity compared with the alkyl phases, particularly with the polar analytes. Alkyl phases means what? Our plain C18 stationary phase. Now, as there is a polar group embedded into the C18 alkyl phase, and is this polar group is going to increase the polarity of the stationary phase and hence going to help in retaining the polar analytes. The phases can be used in a low percentages of organic solvent or even with 100% water without de-weighting. De-weighting means what? We discussed about deviating phenomenon in the last uh, slide. Deviating means some stationary phases like hydrophobic stationary phases, C8 or C18 stationary phases are hydrophobic stationary phases. So they are going to repel the water, isn't it? And out of this repellent process, your stationary phase can give, go dry or can go deviate. But in case if these polar functional groups are present onto the stationary phase, Will the water get repelled now? Because water is a polar and our functional group present onto the stationary phase is also polar. So polar attracts polar. Polar likes polar. And because of that, this deviating of this so-called reverse phase stationary phase can be avoided. It's a very important phenomenon. And because of that, now you can use the uh, uh, mobile phases containing even 100% aqueous. It is also useful for polar compound retention and leads to stable and reproducible retention and faster gradient regeneration. See the equilibration is going to get increased. The column will take a less time for equilibration and because of that your reproducibility in the retention time will also get increased and faster gradient regeneration is only possible if there is a good equilibration with the change in the proportionate of the, uh, the, pro the the mobile phase composition and this polar groups helps in bringing that equilibration faster so the gradient faster gradient is also possible because of this embedded polar groups onto our c18 stationary phase 
Now, having understood this, uh, uh, you know, the advantages, we will also talk about some of the polar embedded groups. But before that, let us also discuss the last important advantage. The selenol activity is suppressed, which leads to better pick shape and decreased staling of basic compounds. And this is a very important characteristics of the polar embedded groups. Silenol activity gets uh, minimized and we all know because of the silenol secondary effect most of the times these basic compounds have a lot of tailing issues. So this is the first example of amide uh, embedded C18 stationary phase and you can see that this amide group is embedded in the C18 chain. Amide is again the polar functional groups and that is going to make our column polar. And these are the commercial examples of amide embedded phases like Ultima HPC18, Prevail Amide C18, or Zorbax Bonus RP. Carbamate is another polar functional group which has been used in many C18 stationary phases. Uh, and Xterra RP18 or Symmetry Seal RP18 is the commercial examples of this particular stationary phase. Ether embedded phase containing ether which is not much polar but still can help in increasing the polarity of the stationary phase and polaris ether c18 is the commercial example quaternary ammonium embedded phase which also has the the positive charge onto the stationary phase and this helps in retaining some of the ionic or anionic functional groups so stability based c23 non end capped or stability bsc23 end capped are the commercial examples of this stationary phase the next polar group is a sulfonamide and uh, this is the commercial example of uh, the sulfonamide embedded c18 stationary phase which is a claim polar advantage so does all c18 columns same now though manufacturer claim it is c18 with some different or fancy brand names isn't it they are not same so it is very important to realize this one important concept and based on to the requirement, I think the need of your C18 stationary phase can differ. Thank you so much. And I would like to also see your view on this particular topic in the comment below. Bye-bye.